Hello, everyone, and welcome to discussion 12, which is covering sorting, specifically um, comparison sorts. So first, some announcements that are relevant by the time this is posted on Wednesday, April 14th. Lab 13 is due Friday the 16th, as is project three, phase one. The pre-final form is due this upcoming Monday, April 19th, and project three, phase two is due Thursday, April 27th with no slip days. So make sure to get started on that. Project three is literally so fun. It's my favorite. Um, and you will be able to build really awesome worlds if you like put in that effort and time to get creative with it. With that all said, let's jump into some content review. So at this time, I'm actually gonna go over these sorts very quickly um, and just do a high level conceptual overview because the worksheet will dive in a little more deeply. The first sort we're gonna talk about is insertion sort, which iterates through the list and swaps items backwards as necessary to maintain sortedness. So the idea with insertion sort is that um, at any given moment, you're just looking, going from left to right, and you're gonna check items with the one before them and swap them if they have to be. And so here you would swap one all the way back and that will continue. Again, we're gonna see this in more detail later in the worksheet, but the runtime for insertion sort is n squared. And this is because um, you have to go through every single item in the list and the list is n items long. And in the worst case scenario, you are um, swapping the item back all the way to the beginning of the list or the whole length of the list. And so that's swapping it back n times for every n item, roughly. Um, and so you get this n squared runtime. Um, again, if you are a little, a little confused, we can imagine this drawing, right? Where for the nth element, starting from zero and going up to n, um, you at the worst case scenario, will have to swap it back um, like x number of times on this x-axis. And so this little graph we have is n squared because, you know, a triangle is half of a square and a square is n squared. So one half n squared equals n squared. That is a little geometric explanation for why insertion sort is n squared. Um, and now we can move on to selection sort. So selection sort finds the smallest remaining element in the unsorted portion of the list at each time step. Selection sort is, in my opinion, um, kind of a, a silly, simple-minded sort, right? It goes through the whole list and says, okay, where is the smallest thing? And doing that requires looking through the whole list, right? Because you have to check every element and see, are you the smallest? Once it finds the smallest thing, it puts it at the front of the list. And it does this over and over, looking at every remaining element until the whole thing is full. And so just in the first pass of selection sort right here, we would go, okay, what is the smallest element? We go through, and at the end we go, okay, the smallest thing we saw was one and we put that at the front. And now we have to repeat that four more times to fill in the rest of the um, array. And so this is also N squared because we have to start with, we have to do this for every single element and we are looking at all of the remaining elements in the array. And so this is n squared because for n elements, you look at like roughly n elements each time to fill in every n spot in the array. And so this is where we get that n squared runtime from. We also have merge sort. So you're probably thinking, oh, insertion sort and selection sort seem really simplistic and slow, right? n squared, not very good. Luckily we have awesome merge sort, which splits the list in half applies merge sort to each half, and then merges those two halves together in a zipper fashion. So merge sort if you, um, really relies on this recursive leap of faith, right? You've probably heard that term a lot if you took 61A, but the recursive leap of faith is basically saying, okay, I trust that if I called merge sort on both of my halves, right? I split myself in half and I call merge sort on both halves. I'm going to trust it works. And I got back a sorted two sorted arrays, right? We, we just trust that that happens because we trust that merge sort works. Well, then what's my job is to simply merge these two halves together in a zipper fashion. And so the way we do that is we basically keep a pointer to where we are in both lists. And we sort of go, okay, next, who's the smallest? Who's the smallest? 
It's like, you're only looking at these two items and you go, which one of you is smaller? You at the front. And so you put one at the front and then you move that pointer forward. So it's like, you're sort of moving down the line for um, both arrays. And you go, okay, next, who's the smallest? Who's the smallest? Right now it's two. So then you put in two and so on and so forth. You keep grabbing the next smallest thing until you fill in and you've burned them all. And this is an n log n runtime. The way I like to visualize this is that um, basically you're dividing the array in half every time. So how long does it take to reach that base case where you have size one? Well, if we recall, if your list is of size n and you are dividing it by two or having it, let's say x times, how many times do you need to do that? Or how many recursive layers deep do you need to be to reach the case where you're at your base case and everything equals one? Well, to do the math here, we can work it out like this. And then we can say x equals log base two of n, or in other words, the height of our recursive tree, the number of recursive layers is log n. And the amount of work that we have to do at each layer is also n because we are merging together lists that sum up to a total n elements, right? n equals n. Two lists of n plus two being merged together means total n. And at this level, it's gonna be n plus four plus n plus four, or sorry, n over four plus n over four, right? And so on and so forth. So you're doing n work at each layer and there are log n layers. So you get this n log n runtime. We also have quick sort. Quick sort picks a partition and uses horror partitioning to divide the list so that everything greater than the partition is on the right and everything less than the pivot is on its left. And so let's imagine um, we just picked the first thing in our list to be our pivot arbitrarily, right? You'll actually see that the pivot choice is very important to the runtime of quicksort, but let's just say we're picking the first thing off the list, right? And so in this case, this is three. Now we are going to go through the list and say everything that is greater than our pivot goes to the right. Our pivot is in the middle. Everything that is less than the pivot will fill into the left and four is greater than the pivot, so it also fills into the right. And so this is the result we get. And now we can just quick sort on these subarrays. And again, we're using that recursive loop of faith to assume that eventually things will get sorted. And you can sort of see how just by doing this one partition, we got a little bit closer to sorted and repeating this is gonna give us a sorted list. And so like I was mentioning earlier, the choice of your pivot is actually super important to quick sort. If you have a really bad choice of your pivot, you're gonna see n squared runtime. But on the other hand, if you have a good pivot, you will see n log n runtime. And maybe we can walk through what that really means. So when we just did our analysis of merge sort, we saw part of the reason it gets this n log n runtime is because we're dividing the list in half every time, which means it takes log n layers to reach our base case of one, right? And so we have a height of log n and then n work at each level. Well, with quick sort, let's, we see that we're partitioning and then we're calling on the two, um, like the things less than our partition and the things greater than our pivot, right? And so if we could split our list in half every time, then we would see a runtime the same as merge sort, right? Because we're, splitting in half every time, which means we're going to have a log n height. And then in the whore partitioning scheme, you basically have to look at every single element and like check to see if they're greater than or less than the pivot and like do some swaps as necessary. And that means you are looking at every element. And if there are n elements, it's going to be total n work at every level because you have to look at all the elements across all the sub problems, right? And so we see if you were able to divide in half every time, you would get log n height, n work at each layer, and, and log n runtime, right? And this is actually what we see in the average case if we use like random pivot selection or other methods of making quicksort run better. So that's average. And so in general, quicksort is actually super effective. However, theoretically, if you had a really awful pivot choice every time, and let's say every time you pick an item that actually splits the list into just one item and the rest, right? Your pivot is one and everything goes to the left and nothing really changes. Well then how long is it gonna take for you to reach the base case of one? 
Well, if you have n elements and you're only sub like making the list smaller by one every time, then to reach the base case of one, it's going to take n time or n layers in your recursive tree. So if your recursive tree has a height of n, or it takes you n depth of like depth n recursion, and you're doing n work at each layer, well then that's n squared, right? N layers, n work at each layer, n squared total runtime. So that's in the worst possible case where you're only ever splitting the array into one item and the rest, and it's a bad partition. But in general, quick sort is actually super cool. Heap sort heapifies the array into a max heap and pops the largest element off and appends it to the end until there are no elements left in the heap. You can heapify by syncing nodes in reverse level order. Again, I'm going to go through this in more detail when we actually go through the worksheet, but the idea with heap sort is that you can take any array and heapify it, which means turn it into a valid max heap. And so here, um, a valid max heap might look something like this. I actually think um, if you properly heapify this, it's going to turn out something more like this. Regardless, you get a valid maps heap, max heap right, by um, syncing all the nodes in reverse level order. And once you have this, now all we have to do is simply remove the largest over and over and over and put the largest at the end of the array. So first calling remove largest on this heap would return five. We'd put that in the end. And then the next largest thing in the heap is going to be four. So when we call remove largest again, um, we'll get four and we can put that at the end. And slowly we will pop the largest thing off until we have our full sorted array or list. Um, and so the runtime for this is going to be n log n, because if you recall in our study of max heaps, we saw that the time it takes to remove an element from a um, max heap is at worst going to be log n, because that is the height of our max heap. That's the um, limit on our height, right? And so if that is the height and we have to do this to get every single element, then we're going to see roughly n log n runtime. And so this is the runtime analysis for heap sort. And that actually concludes all of our conceptual review so we can move on to the worksheet.